Hello, Music City Kids, and welcome to our summer edition, Do Something Summer. Today, I have a very special co-host, my daughter, Justice Batarsi, and we are going to be talking today about the current events that are happening all over the world in regards to racism, the trade, and all the protests that are happening. So my daughter's here to help with that conversation. Remember, we here at Music City Kids want to help you grow strong in mind, body, and heart. So talking about these current events is really important in order to help us be well. First up today is my friend, Dr. J Pop. Take it away, Dr. J. Hey guys, we are going to do a little workout together today. It'll get your juices going, your blood flowing, and get your brain ready to do whatever you gotta do today, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is you're gonna stand with your legs far apart, then you're gonna put your hands up in the air, and you're gonna reach down and touch one side, and then come back, and touch the other, okay? We're gonna do this five times. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, and five. Very good. All right, now you're gonna take those same hands, you're gonna reach forward and touch the opposite foot. Ready? One, two, four and five all right now I want you to put your hands up in the air and you're gonna sway to the side like a tree and then to the other side okay you ready one two three four five okay We've got a good stretch. We've been moving our trunk. Now we're gonna move our arms. So what I want you to do, we're gonna do five circles backwards and then five circles forwards. You ready? One, two, three, four, and five. Good. Now let's go the other way. One, two, three, four and five all right the last one we're gonna do you're gonna pretend like you are a airplane so with your arms out and we're gonna go side to side five times you ready one two three four and five very good hope you guys enjoyed that workout got your juices going back to you Tamira thank you dr. J pop you know friends when we're dealing with really big stuff it's important for us to keep moving keeping our bodies healthy is one of the most important ways that we can deal with stress of the big things that are happening in our world now today I introduce the fact that we are talking about do something all summer long so we'll have lots of do something conversations but this week we're talking about doing something just and being just means behaving according to what is right and fair next up is my new friend Erica with a special message about our current events Hi, Music City Kids. I'm so excited to be joining you today. You know, the times that we're living in right now can be really complicated and very confusing, and there's a lot happening. But here's the good news. You don't have to figure this out alone. You know what I do when something feels a little overwhelming or confusing or I'm not sure where to go? I decide to use what I call a spirit of curiosity. And what that means is I get really, really curious about what's happening and I ask lots of questions. And I sort of go on a little treasure hunter discovery for myself. So here's some suggestions 
questions. Let's think about what we can read that can help us discover and unearth some answers about what's going on in the world around us and really help us frame or gain a better understanding. A couple books that I would suggest include Rosa by Nikki Giovanni. She's one of my favorite um, authors, as well as Through My Eyes, which is actually by Ruby Bridges. You should do a little research and figure out who Ruby Bridges is. You may find out that you have quite a bit in common with her. Um, speaking of Ruby, one of my favorite things to do is to look around the landscape that I live in, my city, my community, my neighborhood, and figure out what are some of those things that I can get really curious about. Here's a thought. Go on a scavenger hunt with your family or friends, especially here locally. There are a couple of things that I can think of that I think would be really, really helpful for you to discover. Have you ever heard of Luby Library? Do you know who Alexander Luby is? Maybe it's some time to do a little research. Have you heard of Pearl Cone High School? Did you know that Pearl Cone High School actually used to be two different schools? Pearl School and Cone School that actually combine to create Pearl Cone School. You may see that that has a lot in common with Ruby Bridges. So let's get curious about the world around us. I know it can feel overwhelming, but maybe with a few questions and some supporting adults around you, we can answer those together. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is about some of the, the riots and some of the gatherings and protests that you've been seeing in our community. There's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot of questions, but you know what? Um, Dr. Martin Luther King said, a riot is the language of the unheard. So what does that mean? There must be people within our community whose voices are not being heard right now. And these demonstrations, the protests, and sometimes even the things that don't look so great that we see on news, on the news, are an opportunity for their voices to be heard. You know another way that our voices can be heard? We can write letters to our city council. As a matter of fact, last night, our community showed up by the hundreds at a city council meeting that ended up lasting almost 12 hours. Can you imagine how exciting it must be for your neighbors and your community members, for your teachers, for your parents to be so concerned about the world that you're living in, that they're willing to advocate and amplify their voices for 12 hours? And you can do the same. Won't you start today by writing a letter to your city council representative? If you don't know who that person is, this is a great time to get curious. Ask your parents or any other adults that may be around you to help you find out who your city council representative is. Their job is to make sure that your voice is heard and reflected in the decisions that they make um, in our community every single day. So here's a chance for you to amplify or to raise up your voice by writing a letter to your city council member or our mayor. I hope these tips really help and please understand that you don't have to navigate through the world around you by yourself. We are all here to help. I love that idea of having a spirit of curiosity so we can ask questions and get answers from our family, friends, and community members. Friends, we're all in this together. Hand in hand, side by side, we will make it through. But we've got to ask the questions and have the conversations. So please make sure that you do that. Start today. Next up is our friend Janet from Janet's Planet with a very special episode of an, an adventure that she went on a few years ago with um, SpaceX and G-Force. So you want to space, pay special attention, especially because of the recent mission launch that happened on Saturday. So much happening in our world. So much for us to keep up with. Take it away, Janet. Do you have the right stuff? Then blast off! This is my official zero knot boarding pass, which means I'm going to fly in zero G in just moments from now. I'm official. I am a zero knot. And now it's time to actually board the plane. And we are about to find out what happens when we are in microgravity. Weightlessness is achieved by flying G-Force 1 through a parabolic flight maneuver. Specially trained pilots fly these maneuvers between approximately 24,000 and 34,000 feet altitude. 
Each parabola takes 10 miles of airspace to perform and lasts approximately one minute from start to finish. The actual weightlessness experience lasts about 20 to 25 seconds. On the first parabola, everyone aboard experiences Martian gravity, which is one-third the Earth's gravity. Wow! Totally with my fingertips. Look at this. On the second parabola, we experience lunar gravity, which is one-sixth the Earth's gravity. This is what Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin felt when they were on the moon. It's just a sixth of the Earth's gravity, and you can hop and float. Oh, wow. Hippity hoppity, hippity hop over you and you. On the third parabola, we again experience lunar gravity. This time, we're going to exhibit superhuman strength by doing pyramid push-ups. And now, it's time to experience microgravity. Unbelievable! It's like being a balloon that's just gotten filled with helium. On this parabola, I release a feather, a stone, and a hammer, and they float in microgravity. On this parabola, see what happens when I release candy in microgravity. Mm, good. On this parabola, see what happens when I release water from my water bottle in microgravity. In microgravity, water forms spherical globules. On this parabola, look at me as a human ball. Observe the action and reaction and the transfer of momentum. On this parabola, I used my super microgravity powers and flew like Superman. Welcome to Janet's Planet, where we're traveling at the speed of thought. Thank you, Janet. That was really fun to see what happens in zero gravity. And friends, again, there's so much happening in our world. Tune in to the news to find out about this recent space mission. Again, today I said that I have a special co-host, my daughter, Justice Batarsi. She is 17 years old, and um, she's here to talk more with us about the recent events because, believe it or not, <laughs> Justice and I, she's, she's my daughter, but we have a very special relationship because instead of being born from my womb, I adopted Justice and her brothers. And um, Justice, do you want to talk more about that? A yeah. Bit, the adoption part? Um, no, like, what about it? Just, uh, <laughs> um, well, like, it's a very special adoption because her birth parents are black and white. And so Justice yeah. is both black and white and identifies as black. And I am white. So we have a really interesting mix as a family. We have a very multicultural family. And now her dad and stepmom, I mean, we've got everything. We've oh, yes. got white. We've got black. We've got biracial. We've got Hispanic. We've got Middle Eastern. I mean, between the whole big family, we've got every part of the world covered. So <laughs> Justice, has a very, <laughs> yes, Justice has a very unique perspective on the world because of all that she's experienced. And Justice, I'd like you to share a little bit with our friends about the most recent events and how you see them? Um, so uh, with a lot that's going on right now, um, I just, I kind of, you know, I observe that there's one group of people that is just not being as well respected as they deserve to be. Like everybody else is being treated one way and then they're not. Um, I kind of just think about it like if you you get hurt and your mom, and you're with your friends, your mom comes and she gives you a Band-Aid but she's not coming to give you and your friends a band-aid like everybody of your friends just you because you're a person that's hurt but that's how i see it is this one group of people is hurt and so we're using our resources to help them and give them this band-aid like here we're here to support you yeah that's well said so it's giving people what they need at the time yeah mm -hmm. and our brothers and sisters are in pain and we need to listen to their pain and be with them in it so that we can change the systems around us and make everything more fair and just for all. That's what we're talking about. Next up is my friend, Angelie. 
Hey guys, my name is Angelie LaFleur and I'm going to be talking about some ideas of what you can do during the summer while we're in our houses. Yay, it's summer. A thing that I would recommend is some reading because reading helps a lot when you're like bored and stuff and it can also activate your imagination to like want to daydream while you're bored. Who knows? Like, I'm reading a book right now. It's called A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. And it's about a little girl who lives in Brooklyn in Williamsburg slums, which is like a very poor neighborhood that were that was um, in 1902 until 1919. And like a feel good, but also like an informational book because you, you might want to know what happened in the past in like New York or in the United States. So this is a really good book. I would really recommend it. You can like read to your family, read to your siblings, read to people on the phone because it's that thing that you can do wherever, whenever. Another thing you can do while you're on a summer break is make, make music because like Currently, I'm making music and it's like different styles of music. I'm going to show you something that I have been working on for a little bit. First, I added a lo-fi beat crackle. And then the second thing is a lo-fi beat key. And the third thing is a vocal FX. So I'm just gonna put a sample of that. Like that, that's a vocal effect. The last thing I'm going to do is add a actual beat, a actual lo-fi beat. And you can make your own like loop sometimes. Chop it up if you want. And I can put it at the section I want it to be in. Now, time to hear the final product. Like it starts off slow. And that's what I like about lo-fi. And the beats come in. Well, that's something that you can do over the break that you have for like two months, who knows how long. Okay, another one is dancing or like you can get on the app TikTok because a whole bunch of people know what it is and then you can probably do some family TikToks those are hilarious hilarious like dancing is also what brings us together because we have our different dance moves we're not some of us are not such great dancers to me like it, it really doesn't matter who dances, it's just like the fun that they have. If they're not even having fun, like that's, that's messed up. So fun and it like brings joy to everybody in the room and it's really good. So you might wanna do that and also do some f like family gatherings, family movie time, family game night, and that will be like a whole entire bonding moment for everybody in your family that you're with. That is all for what I have, and I'll see you another time. Angelie out. Angelie, those are such great ideas. So we're gonna read, we're gonna make some music, we're gonna dance, you like to dance, Justice? I like to dance. TikTok dances? Love TikTok dances. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna spend some time with family, family game night. What's our favorite game? Quirkle. Quirkle. I was yeah. thinking James Bond. We like James oh, Bond that's too. You. It's a card oh. game. So yeah, we have lots of family bonding like Angela Lee was talking about with, uh, with the games. So these are great ideas of things that we can do in the summer. Next up is my friend Josh Mundy, and he is a local businessman here in Nashville who works hard to bring our community together. Take it away, Josh. Thanks, Tamara. This is Joshua Mundy here for another episode of Entrepreneurship Music City 
kids. Now, if you all been all along the process, me and Zion have launched our very own lemonade stand. Now, hopefully, you've gotten to the process to launch your business or concept, or you may be still just working on the plan. That's okay. Uh, what I want to talk to you all today about is marketing. Now, marketing is a tool that you utilize to get the word out about your business or service. And I'm going to be talking about some tools that you can utilize. Now, you may not be able to utilize because you're a kid, but if you can get your parents to utilize it for you, it will be a great way to grow your business. So number one is social media. Now, social media is one of the biggest platforms to advertise and market your business. So you have Instagram, you have Facebook, and now this huge popular thing out right now for kids is TikTok, all right? So those are different ways that you can get the word out about your product or service. Now, if you are offering an internet-based service or a service that you can ship to someone, then social media is great. Now, if you have a brick and mortar business, social media is great as well. You just direct people to actually where you're gonna be located. So with me and Zion, we have a lemonade stand. We would spread the word and say, hey, our lemonade stand is open on Monday, seven o'clock. Here's our address. Please come and support our business. That's how we would spread the word and let everyone know about what we have going on. Another way to um, market your business is the newspaper. I know newspaper is old and is, is not really a traditional thing anymore, but newspaper is also a great way to get the word out about what you have going on. So if you have a yard sale, you're selling something, the newspaper is a great way. Uh, number three is your neighborhood newsletter with me and Zion working in our neighborhood would be a great way for us to sell a lot of lemonade. So we would you know, distribute it throughout the neighborhood via the newsletter, or we could print out flyers and put them on people's door to let them know when we're gonna be set up and how we're gonna be set up, how much things cost, and that is another tool to market your business. So marketing is a very, very, very essential to helping you grow your enterprise. And without marketing, no one knows you exist. So you have to utilize that marketing to spread the word. So when we when we made money, uh, me and Zion, and we made $28.50, we have to decide, all right, are we gonna pay ourselves or are we gonna put the money back into the business? So we decided to put the money back into the business and utilize that for marketing dollars to spread the word so we can make more money. You got it? So market your business, figure out your marketing strategy on how you're gonna spread the word so you can grow your enterprise. Back to you, Tamara. Thank you so much, Josh. Kids, one of the best ways that we can make change in our community is through entrepreneurship and supporting local owned businesses. So please make sure that you do that wherever you live. Next up is my friend, Ricky, with Be Well in School. Hey friends, Ricky Ratner here with Be Well in School. And I'm so excited to teach you another seated pose today. Today we're learning Take a Twist. And this is an awesome pose to support good posture and spine health. So we move our spine in all different ways so that if we fall or if we have to move our body in a weird way, our body has, has practiced doing that and we're used to moving our body in different ways and avoiding injury. So let's twist it out today and see how it feels in our body. So I'm going to turn this way so you can see what's going on in my back. We're going to start by showing me your left hand and that's going to cross over to your right knee. So we're going to cross your body and show me your right hand. That comes right behind your back as a kickstand to help us sit up nice and tall in our spine to avoid rounding or arching. We're sitting up nice and tall. So we take a deep breath in to find that length in the spine. And then exhale, we're gonna twist and look over the right shoulder. Stay here, take a deep breath and sit taller. And twist a little deeper on your exhale. Inhale, come back to center, unwind, 
Maybe shake up your shoulders a little bit. And then show me your right hand. Right hand comes across the body to your left knee. Left hand goes right behind you. It's your kickstand up. You sit up nice and tall. Take a deep breath in. Find that length in your spine. Exhale, twisting out of your midsection. This is called your thoracic spine, the middle of your spine. You want to twist in our midsection and look over that left shoulder. Take another deep breath and sit taller. Exhale, maybe twist a little deeper in that thoracic spine. And inhale, come back to center. Maybe roll your shoulders backwards. Roll your shoulders forward. And just notice how that feels. Maybe you feel a little more open in your side body, but that was also really good for your spine to get in some movement like that. So take that as much as you need today. If you notice yourself sitting on the couch kind of slumped, sit up nice and tall and take a little twist with your breath to wake things back up. All right, let us know how it goes and if you have any questions as you try out your different poses. I hope you have a beautiful day and I can't wait to practice with you again soon. Friends, remember that especially when we're dealing with really big emotions, it's important for us to keep our bodies moving. That's one of the ways that we can release the stress that we're feeling inside. So thank you, Ricky, for sharing that with us. Next, I wanna share some stories with you because as Erica mentioned, Reading books is a wonderful way for us to learn about our lives and the experiences of others. So here's a book called Let the Children March by Monica Clark Robinson. And it chronicles the Children's Crusade in Birmingham in 1963. Now, Justice, I wanna ask you, did we read a lot of stories when you were growing All up? All the time. <laughs> All the time. What are some of your favorite books? Um, the Edward Tulane stories about this rabbit <laughs> and um, Beatrix Potter about bunny. And also bunny books. Lots of bunny books. <laughs> um, yeah. Any others? Um, Ruby Bridges. Do you have it with you? Can you I show do it? have it with me. Ruby Bridges. It and was... why was that book important to you? I just loved learning about or like reading about how she made this huge impact in society and how she went against you know what everyone else was saying needed to be done and she helped solve a problem in our system and i thought that was i love that mm -hmm. and it's interesting that ruby bridges was six years old when she made that big impact in our world and in let the children march we're looking at kids of all ages who made an impact in our world too so kids you can make a difference. Let your voice be heard. Like Erica said, write those letters and make sure that you're reaching out to your friends and letting them know how much you care about them. Next up is our friend CJ Walton with a new segment about the history of our state and of our nation. Hi guys, what's going on? It's Miss CJ's class and I am so excited. I have partnered up with Love in a Big World to bring you none other than the history class. Oh my God, I love history and I want you to love it too. Today, we are gonna be talking about fun facts about this great state, all right? Are you ready? Because I want you to be so excited about history and about the state that you live in. Can you guess? the state. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be talking about a couple of fun facts. I want you to guess how many fun facts that I'm going to be talking about. So at the end of this video, you tell me how many fun facts you learned about the great state of Tennessee. That's right. We're going to be talking about Tennessee today because guess what? The 4th of July is coming up and I cannot wait for that because I want my barbecue, honey. I want my barbecue. I want my coleslaw. I want my hot dogs. I want, I want it all. I just want to get out. I just want to eat. I just want to eat. So are you ready? Let's get into our first fact. Did you know? You know where we are? Can you take a guess? That's right. We're at the state capitol. But did you know that Nashville was not the first state capitol? It wasn't. Can you guess which the first state capitol? I'll give you a hint. I'm wearing its color. I'll give you another hint. It has a song named after it. I'll sing a little bit. Way down south in good old Rocky Top, 
That's right, it's Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee was the actual very first capital of Tennessee. That's right. The second one was, it's about 30 minutes away from here. Murfreesboro, absolutely. Murfreesboro was the second capital. Now, Tennessee was the capital twice. Do you hear me? It was the capital twice before it became the permanent capital in 1826. But in 1796, when we became the 16th state, I mean, the 16th state in the union, you know what I'm saying? We're pretty cool. That's right. Tennessee, Knoxville. Knoxville, Tennessee was the very first capital of Tennessee. Now, here's another fun fact. Did you know that there are some really good, yummy, yummy treats that come from Tennessee? I'll give you a hint. One has marshmallow in it. And it's shaped like the moon. That's right, they're moon pies. My favorite treat in the world growing up was eating a moon pie, having me a RC Cola, which is another thing from Tennessee. It's originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Guess what else is originally from Tennessee? Oh yeah, it's another sweet treat. Oh yeah, I'll give you a hint. You get it at the fair and it's sugary and you can put it on a cone and you can get it as big and as big and as big and as big as you want it. And then when you eat it, it just tastes like nothing. It tastes like air. Can you guess? I'll give you another hint. My shirt is made with it. I'm just joking. No, it's cotton candy. Cotton candy is another invention, another great invention, right here from the beautiful state of Tennessee. You know what else is from Tennessee? Something that I used to love to play growing up from my own home state of Chattanooga. Mini golf. That's right. One of the very first mini golf courses was right here in Tennessee, founded in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Can you believe that? That's what else was here. We have over 3,800 caves. Caves, like going digging caves, like real life caves. Like, can you believe all the the great stuff that's in your own home state? I'm not even done. Hey guys, it's this drink that we adults love to drink. Now, you know you kids not supposed to drink it, right? You know you're not supposed to have it. You're not supposed to do anything with it, but it's called coffee. And that's right, coffee. In 1907, Theodore Roosevelt, came down here to Nashville, Tennessee, and went to that very famous Maxwell House. Have you ever heard of Maxwell House? Hmm, maybe you've heard of Maxwell House coffee. That's right, because when he drunk this coffee, he said it was good to the last drop. So actually in 1907, President Theodore Roosevelt, when he came here to none other than Nashville, Tennessee, and went to none other than the Maxwell House Hotel, he coined that coffee, and that's where that coffee came from, the Maxwell House coffee. We have so many great things that come out of Tennessee. So many great people. Do you know how many people Tennessee has sent to the presidency? Not one, not two, but three different men. That's right. And we'll get to that in another lesson. But just know that all of them came from Tennessee, directly here. Now. Here's the last little interesting fun fact that I'm gonna tell you. Do you happen to know what our state color is? I'll give you another hint. I'm wearing it. That's right, our state color is orange. Can you believe that? Even states have a state color. We have a state bird, we have a state horse, we even have a state animal. And I'll go ahead and tell you what the animal is. It's a raccoon. That's right. Our state animal is a raccoon. Now, at the end of this, I want you to tell me how many interesting fun facts that you found and how many did I tell you. And can you tell me some that you find about Tennessee? So until next time, you have been in Miss CJ's class. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Miss CJ, that was so much fun. What a great way to learn about history and geography all at the same time. Justice, what was your favorite fun fact? The raccoon, I did not know our state animal was a raccoon. I didn't know our state color was orange. So friends, if you're living in another state other than Tennessee, find out some fun facts about where you live. It's a great way to get to know the world around you. Next up is our friend Sharif Iman with a special song.
feel good, hey, you know I wish I could stay, yeah, but it's my time to go, I've gotta hit this road, cause it keeps calling me and I know, I gotta do what I gotta do, cause I've been working so hard, and I've been waiting so long to shine. That sure shot, been busting this pavement non-stop Said I wouldn't quit till I reached the top Well here I am, and I'm still grooving Aren't you proud of me? I'm talking about my family And all the ones who were there for me That knew one day I would shine I'ma hit you like, uh, when I bring it like, uh, yeah And all those times people hated and thought that I faded Didn't believe in me and said I'd never make it Well, here I am now, doing what I said I'd do And I ain't even mad at you So just watch me and enjoy my style as I shine. Yes, we have got to let our lights shine, friends. These are dark days, but the light inside of us is brighter. Now, I want you to know Sharif Iman is one of my best friends. And just as you grew up with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> what has it meant to you to have strong, positive black role models in your life? It's, in a, in a sense, it's it's kind of like knowing a part of myself, like getting taught a part of myself because, you know, like you, you're a white woman and I am a mixed child and I don't really have any, I don't have my birth parents here with me or my birth father. Um, and so it was nice to like kind of discover a part of myself and like be taught um, what it's like to be a strong black woman. So, so you felt very affirmed. Yeah. And valued mm -hmm. by the strong black men in your life. Yeah. Good. And that was intentional. That's what I hoped and prayed for with all of the friendships that we've had with Sharif and O'Brien and Jean and Terrence and so many others. And I'll tell you, our friends, our community is full of men who are making a positive contribution to our world through their music and their work there. IT technicians and beekeepers and welders and fathers, and they are amazing men. And our lives are richer because of them. Next up is another man who has been such a blessing to my life, it, Dr. Don. Take it away, Dr. Don. Hey, Music City Kids, Dr. Don here with my friend, Chuck. 
and I want to talk to you today a little bit more about sun protection and what to look for. So when you get your sunscreen bottle, you'll notice that it has SPF on it. What does that mean? It means sun protection factor. You'll see a lot of different numbers on there, 10, 15, 30, uh, 50, 45, you know, there, there's different numbers. And what do those all mean? Well, basically, that number means how long you can be in the sun safely for protection. It's pretty simple. So after that number is up, so if you've got SPF 30, you want to you wanna make sure that you put more on and you reapply. So if you're going to be out long days, then you want a stronger protection and you want it on more often. So you got to remember to put it on and you got to remember to reapply. Now there's another little factor. A lot of sunscreen, they all protect against ultraviolet rays from the sun, mainly UVB. And they thought that it was the UVB rays that caused a lot of the damage because they're shorter. But it turns out that the UVA rays actually can cause damage too. So when you're looking at that bottle, you want to make sure it says UVA and UVB, both of them. So these are just little tips to, to, for summertime tips. And you want to make sure you get good protection. Now, if you don't need to be out in the sun or you have to be out in the sun, it is best to wear clothes. Put something on that covers the skin. And there actually are clothing items that exist with a UPF rating, which is an ultraviolet protection factor, in the, in the, for, for the clothes. And you'll get different ratings on those just like you would uh, with the sunscreen. But if you get a UPF 50, it doesn't mean that you can be out in the sun for 50. It just means that 1 50th of the amount of UV light will go through the actual clothing to get your skin. But if you're wearing uh, linen clothes or something that's kind of woven loosely, you're going to get more rays that come through there. And it's actually recommended that you put on sunscreen underneath those types of clothing if you're going to be out in the sun a lot. Um, but just remember, wear a hat, wear sunglasses, protect your eyes from the sun, wear clothing, long sleeves, uh, long pants. Remember, sunscreen on the ears. Uh, I used to surf um, a long time ago, and that is one thing that you might, all, might typically forget is to sunscreen your ears because you'll be out there, and all of a sudden, oh man, they're burnt, and you got big red ears. You don't want that don't want that so just remember protect yourself from the sun and be safe have a good time back to you Tamara thank you Dr. Don and Chuck for that advice for when we get out into the sun I learn something new every time thank you for that next up is our friend Jacob with hand eye body hi everyone I'm back with another hand eye coordination challenge we're going to use two balls again. We're going to keep working on the theme of throwing two balls at the same time, going up from each hand. This time, we're going to add a new type of catch. Instead of letting the ball land in your hand like this, we're going to grab it from the top. So just try doing that with one hand. And try doing that with the other hand. Throw it up. You don't have to throw it too high, just a little throw and catch it grabbing down. So what's fun with that is you can start making some rhythms a little faster this way. Right? You can throw both at the same time now. So you're throwing at the same time and catching down. You can alternate like we've done before, and then alternate together, alternate together. Here's what we're going to do next. It's a little hard. You don't have to get it the first time. Just pick it up, keep trying, have fun with it. It's the learning process. That's, it's supposed to be where you're not quite getting it, you're not quite getting it, and you kind of get it. Maybe you go to sleep for a day, wake up again. And then it clicks. So here we go. We're gonna do the palm down catches, 
but we're gonna add in crossing our hands to catch them, like this. You see it? That's pretty advanced, but I wanna push you to try something that's a little beyond your comfort zone. And again, you can slow it down and try it without the cross hands as much as you need to. So have fun and we'll see you next time. Okay, Jacob, every time I see you do those tricks, I think, oh, I got it, I gotta figure this out. And some days I'm better than others. I gotta practice because practice makes perfect. So Justice, I know that you um, and your brothers have done a lot of adventures through the years, whether yes. it's playing or outside or other things. What's it like for you now in this current climate, um, given that you have two brothers, one older and one younger? What do you mean, what's it like? like are you concerned about anything for them right um, now? They're, so their safety a lot of the times, because they are um, uh, significantly darker than me, they look different than me. And so whenever we like leave and stuff, we, or like me and my older brother especially, we um, try to be as cautious as possible, um, just because we don't want, if anything were to happen, if we were to get pulled over or anything, because um, we both drive, um, we wouldn't want any harm to come to him. So we just try to be caught, like follow the rules as best as we possibly can. That's good. That's good. And I think it's really important for all of us to remember that the police are here as community helpers. And there might be some who are not doing a good job of that, as we've all seen. But there are others who are really committed to our safety and well-being. And so we need to respect and honor them. And like you said, if you have a conversation with them, making sure that you, you show respect to them. So, yeah, yeah it's really important. And um, it's something that we're all thinking about even more with, with the young men in our lives. So next up is my friend, Luana. And Luana is a new addition to Music City Kids for Summer. She's got some great stuff. Take a listen. All right, well, welcome back. It's Miss Juana, and we're still talking about loving yourself. And remember, from last time we talked about how love really isn't about loving cupcakes, although cupcakes are really great, and loving your bike, even though your bike is really cool, but it's really about something or someone, rather, that is really important and very valuable to us that would just break our hearts if we didn't have that person. Well, we, we're talking about loving yourself. And the first letter in the word love, hope you got your paper and pencils and your crayon out and your paints, because we're gonna make this little design here and help us remember what love is and how to love ourselves. The first letter is L, right? Okay, so L is going to stand for loyal. L is for loyal, L-O-Y-A-L. -L. And loyal simply means support, complete and total support. No matter what someone does or what someone doesn't do, you love them so much until you give them your complete and total support. You know, we have to learn to support ourselves. And that's one way that we show love to ourselves. So what do I mean by support yourself? I mean, if you want to learn how to shoot hoops, then you have to say to yourself, I'm going to be there for myself. I'm going to push myself and encourage myself until I learn how to shoot hoops. Well, maybe you want to learn how to draw and I mean like really draw so you're gonna say to yourself self I am going to support you to learn how to draw and be really good at it that means I'm not gonna crumble up my piece of paper and throw it away when I feel like it's terrible I can't get it right nope 
you're going to stick it out and hang in there with yourself until you accomplish whatever goal you're setting for yourself. So if you're out there practicing shooting hoops and you want to be good at it, you can't throw your ball and say, oh, I'll never get it. No, you're going to support yourself. Complete and total loyalty to yourself first. And you know what? This will teach you how later on to be loyal to your friends. And we're going to get to that also later on. In the meantime, though, remember L is for loyalty. Thank you, Luana. I'm so glad that you are part of our Music City Kids Summer Edition. It's great to hear from you. And what you're talking about when it comes to loyalty is so important. We must be loyal, give ourselves the support that we need, especially through difficult times, especially when we want to learn new skills. And that does help us be more loyal and supportive of others in our lives as well. So thank you for that. Next is our friend Steve Sherman, another new addition to Music City Kids, all the way from South Africa. And today he's going to be teaching us about coding. So listen up. Right, boys and girls, we're going to get started and we're going to be talking about scratch coding. Have you ever wanted to learn how to code using scratch coding? Well, it's very simple. You go to scratch.mit.edu. And then, of course, you're going to click where it says start creating. And once you click there, it will take you to the scratch coding page. I'll introduce you to all the different aspects of that page. I'm going to close the tutorial window because you can actually watch tutorials on your own and you should be able to get started quite easily after today's session. This over here is our sprite or our character. We could choose uh, a different one if we wanted to. This over here is our backdrop or our stage. I'm going to quickly choose a boardwalk. I think that would be quite cool. Maybe we can drag our cat over there. And of course, on the left hand side, we've got our blocks. These are our motion blocks. These are our looks blocks, sounds, events, controls, sensing. So all these buttons over here control the different types of blocks. And the way it works is you drag your block onto the screen. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to drag this one on when the space bar is pushed. And then I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to choose change the X axis by two, uh, 10 units. And when I push the space bar, here we go, my character starts moving. But I think it would be more appropriate if I put the right arrow and then when I push the right arrow, he moves to the right. So what I can do is I can duplicate this. Here we go. And I'm going to say, when you push the left arrow, instead of going to the right, I want you to go minus 10. Let's see what happens now. Left arrow, right arrow. So far, so good. And then, of course, if I want to get my character to move up and down, what do I do? I duplicate this block. I'm going to push the up arrow over there, but I can't use change X. I need the change by Y. So I'm going to move that back there. And this time I'm going to put change by Y. Notice how the blocks click together. And if I duplicate that again, I can put the down arrow and change my Y by negative 10. And now when I push the up arrow, my character can fly up, can come down, can move left and right. And of course, if you are creating a game, then what you will notice is that this is a fabulous way to move your character around the board. I want you to start dreaming ideas of how you could create your very own game using scratch.mit.edu. And back to you, Tamara. Thank you so much, Steve. Friends, it's really important for us to explore coding. Remember that spirit of curiosity that Erica was talking about? Coding might be brand new to you, but I want to encourage you. It's a skill that all of us are going to need in the very near future. 
more and more jobs are available in coding. So check it out, scratch.mit.edu, and just have fun with it. It's a great way to spend some of your time this summer. Next up is my friend, L.A. Jordan. Take it away, L.A. Thanks, Samira. Hey, Music City Kids, it's L.A. Jordan, ready to dance with you. So I hope you guys have been practicing the Augie's Dance Dance. We are almost finished with almost half the song. So if you don't know all the moves, go back and look at some of the old episodes and catch up with this because we are moving with smoke right now. All right, so we're going to go really quickly through what we've already learned, and then we're going to learn the last little bit of this half of the song. Here we go. We went front, back, rock it, rock it, front, back, rock it, rock it, root, root, roll down, roll up, push, push, cross, cross, Michael Jackson. Then one, two, three, four, rock, 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 clap, clap, then one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then back, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what we know so far. Now the next move. We're going to kind of lunge to our right. We're going to put our arms out with our leg. Going out, so we're going to out, then slide it back. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the left. Out, then slide it back. Then we're going to step, clap under, step, clap under the other leg, clap, clap. Got that? So we went step, back, hey, step, back, hey, step, under, step, under, clap, clap. And then we go right back into the verse. All kids, get up and dance. Get up and dance. Right? Here we go. Let's try it all with the music. I'm so proud of you guys. Yes, we've got it so far. From the very beginning, here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Like L.A. said, if you want to learn that full dance, go look at past episodes of Music City Kids on our website, www.musiccitykids.com, and you can find all those dance segments so you can learn it. We'll be posting L.A.'s website so you can get that song and you can practice at home. So fun. Friends, we've been covering a lot of ground today from dance to juggling to yoga to science to all the other things that have been happening in our world. What we want you to know is that we are here to help you grow strong in mind, body, and heart. You are not alone. We are here for you. And Justice, I'm so thankful that you took the time to be with us today. What closing thoughts do you have to share with our friends? Um, just to like stay active and healthy and just use the voice that you're given to make a positive impact in any of any small gesture is very important. So, yeah. And remember that justice is what love looks like in public. And my friend, you are well named because you are one <laughs> who is looking out for the needs of all. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so, I'm so honored to be your mama. 
And thanks again for taking the time to be with us today. So friends, this is what we need. We all need to be together. And kids, I just wanna encourage you, find out what's going on in the world, in your community, have the conversations with your caring adults, know that whatever you're feeling inside is okay, and stay connected to those you love. Even those who may have brown or black skin, find out how they're doing, stay connected, let them know that you love them. We are all in this together. We love you. We'll see you next week here at Music City Kids.